Okay, wonderful. So let's try uh, this next problem. So it says a quantity of 7.480 grams of an organic compound is dissolved into water to make 300 milliliters of solution. The solution has an osmotic pressure of 1.43 atm at 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. The analysis of this compound shows that, so that's the elemental analysis, shows that it contains 41.8% carbon, 4.7% hydrogen, 37.3% oxygen, and 16.3% nitrogen. So calculate the molecular formula for this compound. So if you don't remember how to do empirical formula, then this, this problem will be very difficult for you. Okay, you probably won't be able to get it. Anyways, so this is that table of uh, elemental analysis that it just gave us. So the best way to do this is to remember this is mass percent. So we can just pretend like we have 100 grams of that particular compound to make it much easier, okay? So if we have 100 grams of the compound altogether, right, we can say that instead of being the mass percent, we can say that that's the actual mass in grams, okay? So if we have 100, right, that total is going to be 100.0 right there. So if we say that's 100.0 grams, 41.8% of 100 is 41.8. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. So we can change the units of these to grams, 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 instead of those percentages. Is everybody cool with doing that? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So we've got, um, let's make these closer to the thing so we can, so C-H-O-N.
remind yourself that's how to do it. Okay, so that's how to calculate the empirical formula. Now let's go back and solve what this problem says. So it wants us to figure out what the molar mass of the thing is. Okay, so that's the empirical formula, not the molecular formula. Okay, so that's the smallest whole number ratio of the atoms within this molecule. So it doesn't give us the actual molecular formula. We could calculate the empirical formula, which actually we should do. Let's do that right now. So, so how do we do that? 3 times 12, so let's say the empirical mass is the next thing we're going to calculate. So 3 times 12.01 grams per mole plus 4 times 1.008 grams per mole plus 2 times 16.00 grams per mole um, plus 1 times 14.01 grams per So we got to figure out um, this osmotic pressure problem in order to do that. Okay. So I'm going to erase most of this stuff except for what we just figured out. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. No wonder. of 
the solute? Do we have the number of moles of it? Can we? What do we need to know to figure out the number of moles of it? Not the empirical mass, but what? The molar mass, right? Do we have the molar mass? No, we don't. Uh-uh, this is the empirical mass. This is the empirical mass. We gotta figure out what the uh, molar mass is um, uh, before we can figure out the uh, number of moles, okay? So, let's go about switching this, or we gotta figure out the molarity, sorry, before we can figure out the number of moles, okay? And from there, we're gonna figure out the molar mass. So we've gotta rearrange this equation effectively is what we're doing, okay? So we're going to solve for molarity, right? So hopefully you guys remember how to rearrange algebraically. So solve for molarity, right? So it's going to be um, pi divided by RT, like that. So I like to expand my R, 0.0821 liter ATM, or one mole. Kelvin, 300 kel Kelvin. Okay. Up at the top here, 1.43, was it? Yeah. ATM. Okay, so what's that going to give us? ATM cancels with ATM, Kelvin cancels with Kelvin. Uh, 1 divided by liters divided by moles gives us what? Moles per liter. Okay, so that's going to be our unit here. So, moles per liter, and that's units of what? Guys. Molarity. Molarity, yes. Okay, so, and that's what we want, right? Okay, so 1.43 divided by 0.01, that by 300, and my molarity is 0.0. .0 So what's the equation for molar mass? Guys. The mass over the moles? Yeah, the mass over the moles, right? So it's the mass in grams, right? Divided by the um, number of moles, like that. Okay, so let's let's just draw it. Number of moles. Okay, so um, we've got this right. The molarity. We've got the volume of the solution, right? So we could figure out the number of moles, right? Is everybody okay with that? Yes. So um, let's rearrange this. So number of moles of solute is going to equal the molarity times the volume of the solution. So 0.0581 moles per one liter times 0 0.300 liters, like that. So that gives us the number of moles. Are you okay with that? Does that make sense? Okay. So do we have the mass of it in grams? 
Yes. Divided by the number of moles, 0 0.0174 moles, grams per mole, that's going to give us the molar mass. Okay? So um, if this number is 86.7, then this is the molar molecular form. Okay? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Why don't you move the decimal place for Kelvin's? Do what now? You move the decimal place for Kelvin's? So, yeah, okay. So, okay. So let's uh, let's just continue the problem. Okay, seven point four eight divided by. Sorry. So what did I get? Four twenty nine grams per mole. Right. That's the three six six. Three six six. Okay. Everybody remembers their six big rules. Okay, so is 429 the same number as 86.07? Is that the same number, guys? No. no. No, it's not the same number. So is this the molecular formula here? No. No. So we're going to have to figure out what the molecular formula is by uh, taking the ratio of the molar the molecular mass, the molar mass divided by the ratio the empirical mass. Okay? So if you guys remember how to do that, I'm sure. I'm going to erase this bottom part down here. Okay. So how do I get that mass ratio? So it's going to be the big one, the molar mass divided by the empirical mass. Right, so 429 grams per mole divided by, where are we? 86.07 grams per mole. Grams per mole cancels, of course. Four point nine eight nine. So what is that? So that equals four point. 99, so that's approximately what? Five. Five, okay. So five there, so what are we going to do to the empirical formula? We're going to multiply by five, okay. So, just take five, C3, H4, O2, N, and so what's the molecular formula? It's going to be C, 3 times 5 is 15. Um, H, 4 times 5 is 20. O, 5 times 2, 10. And M, 1 times 5 is 5. So that's how you do that problem. So the crux of this problem, of course, is to know that osmotic pressure. Um, all the other stuff is stuff that you learned in general chemistry. Okay. Any other questions on this one? No. Okay, wonderful. Thank you.